It is the Lonnie Hunter Variety Show here on the Rayma Television Network, and Family Season 2 is already off to a bang. And I got two brothers here with me today. I'm telling you, when I say the word brothers, this is brothers for real. I wanted this show to be so Chicago-based that it would just drive you crazy because Chicago has an energy to it that is uh, like none other. So today on the show, I got my little brother and my big brother. <laughs> my little brother, Vashon Mitchell, is on the show. What's up, baby? What up, what up, what up? He's so cool, it just ought to be a law against it. You understand me? Listen, my big brother is on the show. Ricky Dillard, what's up, boy? I am here. Oh, Lord. I told y'all this was going to be a press for me because <laughs> these are some clowns for real. <laughs> so, Vashon, talk to me, man. I've been talking to everybody about this COVID and some of the things that they're doing around that to just kind of keep, you know, visible and keep busy. What are you doing? You know what? COVID has allowed me to actually reset, Lonnie. I found out that I was just too busy being busy sometime and traveling. So when you have to stop, you have to reset and rethink. So during this last time, I'm definitely working on new music. I just put out a project from South Africa, a worship leaders. I want to present them in the U.S. Uh, everything is streaming and digital, so it's easy to do. Uh, but I also, I didn't finish my degree a few years ago. So I went back to school at Full Sail University, and I got about six months left. So pray for me. So I've been spending my time very wisely. And uh, yeah, yeah we, we got to come out on top, come out better than we were before, because it's not going to be the same no more. It's going to be a new normal. Yeah. Be ready for it. That's all. What's the degree in, Sean? Uh, music business. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah. Doc. Thanks, man. You know, making these different deals and not only being an artist, but a label and a brand and all that, you know, we can't expect lawyers to tell us everything. So I want to learn more about the industry, you know, just to have a paper, but to also, you know, be able to maneuver as the industry changes. You know what? And I'm glad you said that because uh, Ricky, as he talked about uh, being in the industry and knowing what the industry is about and knowing the ins and outs of, um, just kind of how it works. You went, you ran the gamut almost from when you started uh, and just kind of being green in, in the industry and, and to now having learned so much to now you can kind of control what happens with you. Well, how important is that? Well, it's, it's, it's really great important to um, be able to grow and to expand your knowledge in the industry because a lot of us in the early years, we were so excited to get into of the industry that we miss the business or we missed learning the maneuvering through it and learning how to maintain our artistry and to also also obtain finance yeah so um i really applaud and salute vashawn on his going back to school to be educated and perhaps he'll be here representing some of us you know i'm an og i've been here for four decades <laughs> so, you, know, okay. you know you're not gonna get an og to his mind ain't as young as brother vashon but hey. uh, i think it is very important and i do applaud yeah. you vashon for it i Thank look you. for some of them ingredients to be shared with your brethren who you know we're not sitting in that seat of education but we are open to be empowered and to also to learn and glean from the seat where you're sitting. So it is very important. That. Now you all, we have history, all three of us, that probably people would never even imagine to the point to where, you know, Ricky, you and I, our first job was painting uh, a building together. <laughs> Wow, Ronnie, man, you know I forgot about that, man. Thank you so much for reminding me. That's where we come, we come from. from. That's where we come from and then move to start directing choirs together. That's right. We was we was down in that basement painting that wall and singing them songs and directing each other. <laughs> Thank God for Denise. It was Denise that got us those jobs. Yes, my sister Denise. <laughs> and then Vashon, we go way back to were you eight or seven? About seven. Six or seven. Six or seven years old. And uh, me and Vashon came from the Voices of St. Mark and all of that. And I'm telling you, to see you guys now and to know where we were when we were there, you can't even imagine what I'm seeing right now. Because Vashon would run out in the, in the, and get in the car and be like, where we going? Where? Like a little seven-year-old would, you know what I'm saying? And now to see you talk about, I just released this South African choir 
What is that? You know, what I'm <laughs> God is just good. So I want to go back. And Ricky, I want to take you back to the Tops Community Singers. What is the funniest thing that ever happened to you in front of an audience with the Tops Community Singers? Um, I wouldn't say that it happened in front of an audience, but Reverend Bronson gave me the mic in Memphis, Tennessee at the, I think, Cook Convention Center. The Tommies were special guests for something there in Memphis. And we were singing a song and Reverend Bronson, he never tells you what he's going to do. When he's ready for you, you got to be ready for him. Okay. He's going to point you out and he's just going to do one of these numbers. Right. right? Real, Real slow. slow. <laughs> you. So when he points you out, you come. So I came on out. He told me to sing a verse of a song. And I did two verses. But I killed them. <laughs> <laughs> when I got to that bus, he laid me out. He was like, when I give you the mic, I'm going to tell you what to do. I didn't tell you to sing two verses. I told you to sing one. And that's <laughs> one of the most memorable but embarrassing check or chin checks from Reverend Milton Brunson was to do what I told you to do and nothing more. But let me tell you something. Who that sound like now? <laughs> me. Right. <laughs> right. 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 That is all you all day. <laughs> So, Vashon, one of the greatest, you know, Reverend Brunson was one of those teachers, but then I also got that also chin check from Reverend James Cleveland as well. Yeah. So, you know, I've been in this balance of checking that now it rubs off on me with my own singers, but I try to be a little bit more compassionate than they was. They no, was you don't. no, you don't. They was cut up. No, you they, don't. You, you had, you could do no, you don't. 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 I've seen you do your thing and no, you do not. <laughs> All right, Vashon, I'm taking you back to the voices of St. Mark. Yeah. Give me the funniest thing that ever happened to you becoming a director. Oh, that's good. Uh, so a lot of people don't know it. You didn't say it. I was your assistant director for years at St. Right. Mark. And you was gone one Sunday and Reverend Jordan wanted to hit a drip drop song and nobody had ever directed it but you. So I got to the direct drip drop. I got through the whole song. I got to the end and forgot how to do the drip drop. So I was doing joy instead of drip drop and messed the whole choir up. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. But and I sang it. I was a tenor forever, but we never directed it because you had your own style. Right. Yeah. I never, I never knew, knew that, that dude. dude. And, and actually, actually I kept the, it on purpose. the joy going around, the rounds of joy and the rounds of drip drop. Although they're both rounds, they are two different uh, fields. Yes. So when I, was point, when I was pointing at them, I was oh, pointing yeah. the wrong way. Yeah. Drip drop is totally different than more abundantly. <laughs> You're right. It's totally different than the joys. Uh. I applaud you, choir <laughs> master. I, listen, how you arrange drip right. drop? Oh yeah, yeah, I couldn't even get. Yes, drip you drop. could. <laughs> <laughs> I got it now, though. I got it now. You got, you it, got now. it now. If they call me back, I can do it. So if I play it right now, you'll be able to direct it? I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. All right, listen. So we got to go to Chicago, family. Sean, you from Chicago. Ricky, you from Chicago. I want you all to tell me what makes Chicago gospel music. Or as you travel, can you always tell if somebody has a Chicago element in them when you're in another city? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we from Chicago, born and raised before we even saw the others. And I'm not saying that the others could not have created some of these things, but um, nine times out of 10, because Chicago had or has some of the greatest gospel artists. When you talk about brands, you know, going back in the day from the Albertina Walkers, the Caravans, the uh, uh, Barrett sisters, and Bronson Hayes. Yeah. Clay. Yeah. You talk, we, listen, we, we, we had it going on, and the music came out of Chicago was innovative, life changing, all of it. Yeah. And people from other places had to take that stuff because we were the greatest and is the greatest. You know so, what I'm saying? So, 
So Vashon, when you were coming up, it was the, the midnight musicals were big, the third Sunday musicals were big, uh, and you got that embedded in you. Yeah, the broadcasts were big. And now where you are, when you go to another city, say you're in um, Arkansas, can you tell the difference if somebody in Arkansas is singing a Chicago song, whether or not they got the Chicago juice or are they doing this like Arkansas would do it? Absolutely. You know, I've traveled the world extensively and I've lived in a few states, whatever. And I always can tell if, if someone is singing something from Chicago, even if I never heard the song before or trying yeah. to say something from Chicago. Yeah. Because Chicago, like, I grew up singing like with all the artists, like Ricky Dillard and all the rest of them as well. Uh, but the thing is that it's church choirs that you walk into a room and, and, and church musicians, uh, storefront church that will be six members and sing like like 19 or 100. Yeah, it's because kill. The, the Chicago sound is just, it's just known across the world. We, Absolutely. Chicago sound, you know it. Absolutely. So how old were you when you left Chicago for the first time, Vashon? I was 30. And how old were you, Ricky, when you left Chicago for the first time? I was in my 30s, so I'm going to say maybe 35. And you live where now, Ricky? Where do you live now? I actually live in Maryland. And Vashon? And, and Georgia. <laughs> and where you live, Vashon? I live in Georgia and another state. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can tell I'm trying to set them up right, but they are answering perfectly. I love it for real. And in other states. I I'm too old. Listen, you're going to see me somewhere. Hey, so you know, well, no, I'm here. <laughs> I love it, man. Listen, y'all stay close because it's a whole lot more coming on the Lonnie Hunter Variety Show with Ricky Dillon and Vashon Mitchell. I'm going to go into some stuff that y'all not ready for. So stay close. We'll be right back. I wish I could, but I just don't know how. I don't have the time. I don't have enough technical knowledge to pull this off. I'm too young. No one will listen to me. So what's really holding you back? What if you could create the life you imagine no matter the circumstance or what others think? What if you could move the fear or use it. The choice is yours. Change your thinking, <laughs> you change your life. So if you're willing to take a risk on you to give up something so you can go up, follow me on social media with hundreds of like-minded people becoming the best that they can be. After all, we came to shape the future. Take care. To improve, to impact, to inspire. It's not what I do, but merely who I am, who I'm called to be. I am William A. Brown Sr., overseer and founder of Emmanuel Christian Center of Philadelphia and Los Angeles, California. I'm also an author to the nations, and one of my favorite quotes from my book, The Life Changers Quotes for Life, is leadership is not about control. It's about empowering others to take control of their choices. As overseer of Emmanuel Christian Center of Philadelphia and Los Angeles, I invite you to a place of love and no judgment, for we are the church. We are here to repair the breach, for we are the community who are assigned to build communities and become an impact in individual spiritual and natural life. Visit us, www.EmmanuelChristianCenterInc.com and on Instagram at Emmanuel Christ Inc. I love you all to life and I'll see you soon. And we are back, family, with my boys, yes sir, Chicago's finest, Vashon Mitchell and Ricky Dillard, or should I say Chicago and other places, uh, <laughs> finest. Cities <laughs> unknown. Right, right. All right, so we talked about traveling all over the world. Outside of the U.S., Vashon, what's your favorite place? South Africa. South Africa. And how about you, Ricky? Brazil. Why? I love the culture. I love the beaches. I love uh, just being able to 
travel abroad um, to just, you know, get out of the country. So when I visited Brazil, I had a fantastic beach life there. Uh, it was just good to see our people, people of color. Yeah. They don't live like Americans, but they have their own way of living and their yeah. own food and their own just how they do things. So I really, really enjoyed Brazil. There are other places that I've visited that I also enjoyed, but um, I would say since going there, um, Got it. I, I had an awesome visit to Brazil and would just love to visit again, especially once this COVID is over. And why South Africa, Sean? Uh, I've been going to South Africa since 2010, and uh, it just became like a second home for me. Uh, it's not only just the church worship and the energy and the, the large crowds, but outside of that, my first time going there, I toured like nine places in different parts of the country. And just to see the different varieties of the country and to learn more about the people. I developed some friendships there, some relationships, and it just became family. So even to this day, you know, uh, a lot of us go over there and become, you know, bigger than we are. But I've been trying to get, you know, some of them in, in the U.S., some of the sounds from South Africa, because those sounds are so unique and authentic, and it would definitely enhance our worship. So it's like family to me, you know. It, it, I love it. Uh, become home. You know, you bring up a good point because anytime you travel to another country, it's almost like the way America would treat a Michael Jackson, those other countries treat you. And the longer you stay over there, the bigger a shock it is when you come back home. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And people are like, whatever, after you've been having to be carried through, through, you know, through uh, crowds and trying to be safe and all of that kind of stuff. I want to talk about safety as it relates to your family makeup. I know both of you and some of the struggles that you've had to go through uh, with family, some of the triumphs. Uh, Vashon, you were primarily raised by your grandmother. Yeah. Uh, talk to somebody who was out here right now. Their mother is in the picture. Their father might be in the picture. There may be other family members, but they are. Uh, there's a disconnect. How do you fight past that disconnect of thinking, I'm not good enough or I'm not strong enough or I'm not talented enough to press through to what God has for you. What, what did you do? What got you through? You know what? I always understood that I was bigger than my situation, you know, and that, you know, God had me where he wanted me to be on purpose. Uh, I tell the story a little bit, but I don't tell a lot, but my mom was a teenager. My dad yeah. was a teenager. So I was grateful that my grandparents decided to have an eighth child, you want to call it that, and to raise me while they be teenagers. You know, and in that, I don't think I would have been who I am today if I was raised by teenagers. So I'm right. thankful for the, for the grandmother and the grandfather. You know, you remember days when my grandfather, I go to Midnight Musical and he'll be up waiting like, you ain't even at no church this late. Right. You know, but those and cuss me out when I drop you off at home. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, uh, I'm grateful for those days. I want to talk about, though, Vashon, when you talk about your parents being teenagers, but they were still in your life. Who did you, who was disciplining you? Who disciplined you? Was it your grandmother or was it the teenage parents that were still in your life? Well, back in the day, it was in the 70s. My mom was sent down south to get right. And I really didn't know my father. I, I just knew his age, whatever. So my grandparents disciplined me. And then they had like, uh, my grandmother had like seven kids. And we all stayed in the same house for a long time. So if it wasn't my grandparents disciplined me, it was a neighbor. It was, it was somebody else. Sometimes it was your sister. You know, yeah. because <laughs> neighbor, or, or any of them, actually, uh, but it was your sister. And it was like, uh, it, I grew up like when it really took a village to raise a child, to be honest. And I don't yeah. think you have that anymore. That's the you point. Know, my first job, your sister gave, got me, you know, at, at Martha's. And then from there, you know, just the church was served a big part because it's like right across the alley from me. So those developments, I think we have lost a lot and we should get them back some type of way because it was that community that helped, yeah. you know, raise, raise me really. To, uh, yeah. And, and Ricky, when he talks about his mother being a teenager, your, your, um, your knowledge of what mother is, is totally different because you and your mother were like glue. Uh, talk, talk to me about that, that whole dynamic of what you were trying to do. Was your mother pushing you to do it? Or was that a disconnect in what she wanted for you and what you wanted for you? Talk to me about that dynamic. The best part about my mother, uh, my mother and grandmother raised me in church. My mother was an usher, a choir member, and then she died as, a church, as the church mother. And my grandmother lived to be 101. 
and she died as the church mother of the same church. It's so in you. I was raised right there all the time, but when they saw my gift and talent, it was my mother on Sundays after a Sunday morning worship, she'd come home to cook and I would be the family entertainment playing the Aretha Franklin and James Cleveland album, Amazing Grace. That album was so amazing, was one of the first albums she bought me and she would make me direct the walls. She just wanted, while she cooked, you direct baby, direct Aretha's album and I would be directing. So once I got be maybe 10, 11, 12, living in the projects in Chicago Heights, yeah. my mother who was a single family mother. I mean, we didn't have a father in the house and my dad and my mother were not together at the time, but my mother went out and bought me a piano, got me piano lessons, um, could see the gift and talent in me. So my mother was always there to see that I had something and I had a call on my life and I had a, a, a gift and a talent in music. And she yeah. got behind it and got behind it and took me over to Father Hayes to Clay Evans when I was a teenager. We would go church hopping to the broadcast and do different things because she knew that I needed to see these things. And I yeah. thank God that she did, that she opened me to those things. She even allowed people who were from our church to allow me to go with them to the broadcast, wow. to yeah. midnight musicals and all of that kind of stuff. So she could see. And by the time I signed my first deal, my mother was there the whole way. She would travel with me. She toured the country. United States as well as out of the States will go with me. So I had a great big support in my mother. So, well, I'm gonna tell you, Ricky, you came full circle. Let me tell you how, what, what, what I mean. Remember you just said you would stand up against a wall and direct the wall, right? I saw you on Sunday best. <laughs> Directing the wall. Directing the wall, baby. If that ain't full circle, I don't know what it is. That's a full circle right there, Doc. That's a full circle right there. <laughs> they told me, they said, Ricky's going to be on Sunday Best. I'm like, during COVID, how are they getting the singers in there? They were like, I don't know, but they, they said he was going to be on there. So I turned it on, and there you were in front of all them virtual screens. I was like, that dog on Ricky Dillard is going to get it done. I don't care what it takes. <laughs> Listen, it was the hardest getting this done that I have ever had to do in my entire life. I don't think I've ever had a performance really? that hard, yes. I didn't have the singers there, I didn't have, you know, it's a difference on stage when you got energy, energy. on the stage. Oh, yeah. The musicians and the singers giving you the energy behind you, but I had nothing but a screen of singers singing on the screen. And you pulled it off, Doc. And they made me cut it three or four times and I'm, Listen, I'm old. I'm, I'm not no young G. You got to let him cut that one. You don't lay it to your heart. And then, hey, get what you get out of it. But they made me do three or four times. I was a wall out. <laughs> all right, fellas, I'm going to move on because yeah, we could talk all day. I promise you we could. This is called Clues and Categories. I'm going to ask you a question. If you know the answer, shout out the answer. The one that wins, wins this uh, episode's Clues and Categories. At the end of the season, I'm pulling back all the winners to do a Clues and Categories tournament, and we're going to give money to your favorite charity if you, if you come out victorious at the end of the season. All right? I'm my favorite charity, so just make sure y'all... <laughs> <laughs> Remember that uh, <laughs> All right, so here we go. Y'all ready? What vegetable is featured as a Chicago statue? Apple. No. It's a new one. They just put it up not too long ago. Oh, no, you know we both you can see your, You can see your reflection in it. You can see your reflection in it. What is that vegetable? We all know what it is. Have we seen On it? Michigan Avenue. I've seen it. I don't know what it is. It's a bean. Oh, That's I thought about it was an apple. They don't name that ain't no apple, that's the bean. <laughs> oh, I, All uh, right, you'll I never forget that. that. We didn't have I can see myself in it though when I be down there. Because you, you, you be looking at yourself. Look at the bean, stop looking at yourself. <laughs> All right, what numbers are associated with your eyesight? 
2020. 2020, boom, there it is. So Vashon got one. How many keys on a piano? 48. <laughs> 72. You got anything, Sean? I don't remember. It's 88 keys on the piano. Oh, 88, surely is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what cliff note piano you working on <laughs> with 48 keys. <laughs> like we come up in the keyboard days, they did small. So right, right, right. <laughs> you push but one button and you get a whole or orchestra. Casio, that's what I thought. He thought about Casio. That's my God, one. this is not going well at all. <laughs> all right. The lowest vocal part in a choir. Bass. Done. Baritone. Bass. All right, so y'all tied, and I don't even want to do a tiebreaker because you all are on my nerves with these answers. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm going to do a tiebreaker, and hopefully you know it. You ready? How many books in the Bible? Oh, wow. Why is this a hard oh, question? Head. I'm going to say about. Not about. <laughs> if you put one more of this number, it becomes the mark of the beast. Six. Sixty. Sixty-six. Wow. It's sixty-six, Ricky. <laughs> what mark of the beast, Sean? You know that's six, five, six. <laughs> no, you said if you put one more number with it. It would be six, six, six. Oh, yeah. It's sixty-six. <laughs> Okay, y'all making me rethink this whole tournament at the end. I might just pick one of y'all and give hey, some money. We OGs, Vashon. Well, tell them, we ain't. Let me tell we you, OGs. We used to be. You see this gray hair? Uh, the one, right? <laughs> oh. All right, I'm going to ask you one and tell me, tell me this. Who is the neighbor on Good Times? Walona. Done. Did you know that, Sean? I did. Oh. <laughs> hey, tell him you was back there, Vashon. That's, that's was back there. I was there in Chicago then. All right, well, Ricky, you won. I don't know how many questions I had to ask to get a court to and the uh, winner, but you won. You won. <laughs> I gotta say, I hey, love y'all to up. death. You I to love y'all to yourself. death. <laughs> right, right, right. So listen, family, every Thursday, this is how it goes down. 7 o'clock here on the Rayma Television Network. Today was incredible. Next week is going to be even better. So uh, show your love to my guests, Vashon Mitchell and Ricky Diller. Love y'all, fellas, all right? Thank you for having us. All right, be good. All right, family, stay close. It's a whole lot more coming up. As a matter of fact, Raymond Television Network is 24-7, so you don't have to leave. You can encourage somebody. You can get motivation. You can get inspiration. It never stops as long as you stay where God needs you to be, and that's right here on the Raymond Television Network. God bless. Get it done.